luck. Voltaire said it in the way that makes the most sense to me. Luck is a word that was invented to express the effects of unknown causes. Given that unknown causes run our lives, everything that happens in our lives reflect luck. It's good luck when we choose to label it good. It's bad luck when we choose to label the outcome bad, all according to our personal definition. Now the world exists and runs according to specific laws, period. Now the choices that we make, the ideas that we invent and then pass on to others, that reflects one of the laws called the law of polarity, polarity opposites. So nothing is either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. You've heard that before. The fact is, everything just is. It's a lot good, or it's a lot bad, but the fact is when it's one, it's also the opposite. Let me put that a little more clearly. If something in your life is a lot good, you could also be choosing to see it as a lot bad. And if something in your life is a lot bad, it's your choice to interpret it as a lot good. So just remember that you have this whole spectrum. And the fact of the matter is, everything's neutral in the middle. And if you're seeing it good or bad, that's a choice you're making. There's also the possibility that it's equally the opposite. Now, as individuals, we make the choice depending on how we live our life, by what we look for, and therefore are creating our reality. Since we only see what we expect to see, and here's the piece most people miss, you also only see what you accept as possible in our own life. Hi, I'm Reverend Ellie Bierman, and I thank you for joining us here today for Let's Get Metaphysical show. And what we're doing is revealing the unknown forces driving our lives in each moment, not just now and then, but in every single moment. So let's go ahead and continue. Let me give you some examples. When my son was a teenager, I was very aware that his friends were lining up their summer jobs. And at first I was feeling annoyed that he wasn't doing it. But he knew what he was doing because he knew his value and his worth as an outstanding musician. And sure enough, the phone started ringing with dinner theater lining him up for their shows, with various orchestras lining him up to play with them. And because he's very confident, always has been in his talent and his ability to keep the orchestra where it belongs, like sometimes he actually saved some pieces when the conductor got lost, he knew and still knows his worth. And he would only accept jobs that paid him the fee that he expected as a teenager. And he would not settle for anything less than what he knew was his value in the piece. Now his confidence in his energy and that confidence, whatever energy is going on inside you, it's not just inside you. The moment that you create it, it goes out to the world, to the universe. And there's no such thing as distance. So it goes everywhere. It's omnipresent. Now, my daughter, all her life, she'll go into a field of clover. And she will find not just one or two, but a few four-leaf 
clovers. Now I'll go into the same field and at most I'll find one, but usually I don't find any. But that's something she expects. That's in her energy. That's what she attracts. She walks in exactly the place where the clovers appear. So having confidence or a lack of confidence, what's going on for you, it's going in your energy, but it's not just staying inside you. It's going out into the world. You're creating your luck, whether it's good luck or whether it's bad luck. That's how you interpret it. Now, in terms of seeing and not seeing, what you accept is possible. Many years ago, uh, my husband and I used to go to my favorite B&B to celebrate our anniversary. Now, this was a colonial home, a real authentic colonial home. There were no telephones. There were no radios. There were no TVs in there. And yet, Without knowing it, it had been sold to somebody else and a lot of things changed. And how did I discover that? I was walking around in the bedroom and I was walking around something, an obstacle. I didn't stop to look and see what the obstacle was. I just knew I was making sure to avoid the something. Suddenly, I heard a TV show. The thing I hadn't seen I was walking around, but I hadn't seen, because I didn't expect it to be there, was a television. And a similar story, someone was visiting me some years ago and wanted to go to a fast food place. Well, I don't eat fast food. I don't go to fast food places. So I told him, there are no fast food places here. But we went out in the car and he said, yes, there it is. So I'd been riding by this place. It was in a shopping center where I shopped, and I absolutely did not see it because it wasn't a possibility in my mind that a fast food place existed where I live. Now, for something to exist in your reality, you have to have a conscious awareness that it's there. Now, in those two examples I gave you, I know Wei had a conscious awareness. I know Wei was accepting it as a possibility in my world. And yet there it was. So now I have a different awareness, a wider conscious awareness of what's in my environment that I didn't used to look for because I never thought it was possible for them to be here. Now you've heard People talk about, I believe it when I see it. But what if the truth is when you believe it, then you'll see it. Belief comes first and then it comes into your reality, but only when you have conscious awareness and allow it in. So our conscious mind is open for all our five senses to dump stuff in, a lot of stuff in the environment. But to truly see what's in our conscious mind, we need to have the conscious awareness of its presence. Okay, now that's why you can follow a teacher who says, Go into your dream home and rather than visualize what's there, actually virtualize it. That term comes from Robert Allen. I worked with him some years ago and I love the concept. It made a lot of sense to me. However, there was some big piece missing. He said, when you go into your dream home, notice what the knob feels like, what it looks like. Do you have to clip it down? Do you turn it and you open the door? What is the door texture? Are you walking on a hardwood floor, a bamboo floor? What are you seeing? What's in the room? What's the furniture? What kind of windows? You're thirsty. Go over to the refrigerator. Grab a glass from the cabinet. 
pour some iced tea, some cold water that's been seen in the refrigerator into your glass. Notice how it feels. If it's cold, the glass might start to have condensation forming. Drink it. How does that feel going down? Is it refreshing? Is it cold? Is it warmer than you expected? All of those things exist. And when you welcome them into conscious awareness, then when you're planning to create them, so you're seeing them first thing in the morning and last thing before you go to sleep at night, because of that link of the conscious awareness, you can introduce that into your reality without the aspect of conscious awareness. I don't care how many years you're writing down, this is my goal for my life. It's not going to come into your life until the conscious awareness allows it in. And the best way to get to your conscious awareness is after you put out the description, see it, visualize it within. Because once you see it, then your body, mind, spirit is able to bring it to you because your mind needs the visual aspect for it to happen. And to contribute to that visual aspect, you virtualize it and you need that third piece of conscious awareness for it to be something that you then see, but not just see, but actually create. And I'm going to talk more about that next time. So let me ask you, would you like to live your life free from fear? What is fear anyway? When you suffer with pain or emotional upsets, your body interprets those energies as anxiety and fear. Are you ready to eliminate fear and anxiety in all its forms? Now, contact me for a drug-free, simple solution to end suffering, to end struggle. You'll find the link in the show notes. For you, I wish you to live in love and joy. That's your natural state. You're born that way. If you're a healthy full-term baby, you're born that way. And you have to let stuff come in and clutter it if you're not at this point living in joy and love. So knock out those limitations as they come in because you weren't born with them. And you are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical Show. And we invite you to take advantage of the Audible gift where you can actually grab your own copy of Change Your Paradigm, Change Your Life by Bob Proctor and have an understanding, a much deeper in-depth understanding of what I'm talking about today. And we'll continue later on this month. Also remember, take advantage of our Facebook group where you can ask questions, where you can get extras. I usually put them in there and you can make a new friend. And also, when you go to our website, all these links are in the show notes, you can watch or listen to any episode. We've got lots of episodes. There'll be something there that interests you. And also on our website, I appreciate you clicking to leaving a review. So other people who are looking to find out how to grow their spiritual experience, after all, you're a spiritual being having a human experience and not the other way around. And people can discover that when they read your review. To get hold of some very special interviews that I did, I call them the Thrive Expert interviews that I did with 11 different people 
who had extraordinary challenges in their lives and they overcame them and they tell you all about them, that's it, A-L-I-T-L-C, that club. It's a private membership where you can grow in ways that you're not going to get to in other places. Remember to enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment, because nothing in your life happens outside of you. It all happens within. I look forward to seeing you here next time.